swimmers, perhaps because their life cycle involved an aquatic larval stage. The Q had transmuted a large number of their human subjects into a bewildering array of aquatic creatures taken care of by specially bred attendants. These post-human water babies came in every shape and size imaginable. There were limbless, ribbon-like varieties of eel people, whale-like behemoths, decorative people who swam by squirting water out of their hypertrophied mouths and horrifying multitudes of brainless wallowers that served as food stock. All of them were perfectly domesticated. All of them went extinct when their masters left. All save a few lightly mutated generalized forms. These swimmers still resembled their human ancestors to a large degree. They had no artificial gills. Their hands were still visible through their front flippers. Their feet were splayed affairs that functioned like a pair of tail flukes. Recognizable human eyes peeked through their blubbery eyelids, and they spoke to each other, though not in words, and never in sentient understanding. For millennia, they swam the oceans of their ecologically stunted world, feeding on diversifying kinds of fish and crustaceans, survivors of the food stock originally imported from Earth. With the intervention of the queue gone, natural selection resumed. The swimmers became more streamlined to better catch their fast prey. The prey responded by getting even faster or evolving defensive countermeasures such as armor, spikes, or poison. Their evolution back on track, the swimmers drifted further and further away from their sentient ancestry. They would wait for a long time indeed to taste that blessing again. Tool breeders, descendants of the swimmers. They used to be simple creatures, descendants of a battered people that had taken to the sea. Their remote sapient ancestors would have given such beings no chance of a sentient comeback, for they thought that technological advances were impossible in the fluid medium of the oceans. But the swimmers disproved such predictions by founding one of the most advanced and most outrageously alien cultures of the entire human lineage. Fire. The cornerstone of industrial engineering was almost impossible to sustain and use underwater, but the breeders simply chose another path when complex tool making proved impractical. They began to breed their tools and machines for them. It had started long before the species was even intelligent. In the endless variety of life in the seas, the swimmers always adopted and controlled the organisms that were useful in some way. Once domesticated, these creatures were willingly or unintentionally modified through artificial selection and conditioning. The process was slow, but once underway, these effects were formidable. A modern city of the breeders was a sight to behold. Huge heart-like creatures pumped out nutritious fluids to a network of self-repairing living conduits. This was their equivalent of a power grid, and it reached every single one of the breeders' huge exoskeleton dwellings, powering bioluminescent lights, flickering cephalopod skin televisions, medicinal sea squirts, and countless other devices that had been bred from living creatures. The advances in biology had risen exponentially until genetic engineering was completely mastered. Modern breeders did not even need to use animals. A simple manipulation of cultured tissues and stem cells could give solutions to any problem at hand. The mastery of genetics had conquered many obstacles. The yawning ocean depths, as well as the planet's few tiny land masses, were now firmly within the breeder's grasp. However, they were not content with mere planetary dreams. New forms and bizarre creatures were still being developed in daring attempts to conquer the one realm that was most hostile to life. Sealed in their living ships, the breeders wished to return to the stars. <laughs>